In this video, I'm going to show you how you can systematically visit each and every item in a two-dimensional array. As in the previous video, I recommend that you keep a sketch of your data handy to help you visualise what's going on. Here's a sketch of the data I'm working with. You may, for example, want to display all of the data items one at a time, row by row, like this. The data are being visited one whole row at a time, but as each row is visited, every column in the row is visited. We say that the data in the array are being visited row-wise. Here's what the output of a program that does this looks like. Alternatively, you might want to visit the data column-wise, like this. A program that does this deals with one complete column at a time. But, as each column is visited, all of the rows in that column are visited. And here's what the output would look like. If you can systematically visit all of the data items in an array, one way or another, then you can collect the data into a single output string, then output everything at once, like this. Systematically visiting the data also allows you to search for something in particular. For example, you could ask the user for a surname and then find all the details of that person like this. So let's take a look at some code and see how this can be done. I'll begin by writing some code to display the data row-wise. I've already declared the array, and I've already initialized all of the elements of the array, just to speed things up. This is the same data which you saw in the previous video. I need two loop counters because I'm going to use nested for loops. If I want to visit one row at a time, I need a for loop like this. Because each row is numbered from 0 to 5. But while I'm visiting a particular row, I want to visit each column, and I can do it with a for loop like this. The columns are numbered from 0 to 4. Think of it this way, for each pass of the outer loop, there will be several passes of the inner loop. And now I'm going to output a data item for each pass of the inner loop. Let's see what happens when we run the program. Now let's display the data column-wise. I'm using a different button to run this program, but I'm going to copy and paste some code. It's the same code I used to declare and initialize the array. In a later video, I'll show you how two different procedures can share the same data. For now, we'll proceed like this. To visit the data column-wise, I'm going to use nested loops again. But this time, I'm going to scan the columns primarily, so I'm going to scan across the x-dimension using my outer loop. And as I visit each column, I'm going to visit each row within that column and I need another message box as before. Let's see how it looks this time.
To display all of the data in a single message box, I need to decide whether I'm going to build the output string in a row-wise fashion or a column-wise fashion. I'm going to do it row-wise, so again I'm going to borrow some code. This is the code that displays the data items individually, but column-wise. I need a string variable to collect the data into. And then, rather than displaying a message box for each pass of the inner loop, I'm going to concatenate some new data to the output string. And between each data item, I'd like a space. Because I want each row of data to appear on a separate line within the message box, I'm going to concatenate a VB new line character onto the output string, but only with each pass of the outer loop. And once the nested loops have both finished, I can do one output with a single message box. Let's see if it works. The final thing I want to show you is how we can search for the details of a particular person based on their surname, for example. I don't actually need nested loops to do this. I'm going to use the same technique which I showed you in the previous video. Let's start by declaring and initialising the array. And I need some loop counters. And I'm going to use a boolean variable to record whether or not I've found what I'm looking for. I'm going to initialise it as false, although to be honest I don't need to do that because immediately after it's been declared it will have a value of false. I just want my code to be explicit. I'll prompt the user for the target surname using an input box just to keep things simple. So I'm going to need a variable to hold the target value. I know that the surnames are in column number one, so I'm going to write a loop to scan down the rows of column number one only, testing each value as I go. Notice how I've hard-coded the value of the x dimension here. I'm always looking at column number one. As I scan down the column, if the data item which I'm looking at matches the target, then I'll set my boolean variable to be equal to true, and I can force an exit from this for loop. By the time I've dropped out of the loop, I know whether or not I've found what I'm looking for. If I have, then I can retrieve the rest of the data for that particular person. Notice this time I'm scanning across the row. The value of y will be whatever it was when the first for loop came to an end. So I know this loop is looking at the correct row. If b found was equal to false, then we simply display a message saying that we can't find what the user was looking for. There's one final thing we need to add to this code. Let's see it in action. That seems to be working fine. And just to be sure, let's look for somebody who isn't in the array. That looks OK as well. Having said that, we have an additional message box here which is rather untidy. Let's put this right. That's better. 
you should try writing some of these programs yourself. Perhaps you could display the data column-wise, but within the same message box. Or maybe build a search facility where you enter the person's occupation to retrieve all of their details.